Okay. Hello folks, welcome back for another update on the Red Sea Max Nano. Um, in this video, I'm just gonna be going over what rock we've decided to go for. We've now got the rock in, as you can see. Um, what rock we've decided to go for and why. Um, we're a little bit ahead of schedule with um, the videos and timing and stuff like that. Obviously the rock is in, and as you can see, there's livestock in here, so we, you know, we're, we're way into our uh, I've finished our cycle and stuff, which I'll explain um, where we are with that. So basically, yeah, with uh, with this tank, uh, with all my marine systems, reef systems that I start up, pretty much all of them I start up with uh, actual live rock, Fiji live rock. And there's pros and cons to using, there's a few options. Um, basically, live rock, something like reef, uh, real reef rock, uh, artificial rock, and um, what I've used in my fish only system is ocean rock. I don't, I've only ever used live rock or ocean rock, depending on what system I'm doing. Obviously, if it's a reef system, we use live rock, um, and if it's a fish only system, I usually go with uh, ocean rock. Now, this time, I want you to do things a little bit different because every time I use live rock, um, it's getting harder and harder to find live rock that's covered in coralline algae. Um, it, the, you know, what you can find kicking around isn't of that good quality, and um, so everybody's really moving over to sort of these artificial solutions. Um, and the pros of, that, of doing that is that you don't get any of the pests that come with live rock. Um, so that being nasty crabs, uh, unwanted uh, parasites, um, algae, different types of macro algae, bubble algae, um, stuff like that. Um, now as, good, as nice as live rock is, um, if you can get a hold of stuff that's coral and coralline, brilliant. Um, but it's like I say, it's really hard to find good, heavily encrusted coralline algae on live rock these days. Um, but then the downside of that is that, you know, pretty much when you put that in the system, you've got loads of coralline already, that's going to be sucking down your alkalinity and your calcium from day one. Um, so with this tank we decided to um, have a pest free system from the get go, uh, and decided to go with this real reef rock, uh, which amazingly, I to say, I've never used it, uh, really impressive, looks really good, looks like mature, real live rock. Because uh, it's already pre cut with like a purple and pink dye on it. Um, yeah, really impressed with the look of it. And obviously, the, the pros of it is no nasties in it. It's not like no nasty macro algae, uh, no nasty crabs, pests. And we haven't got real coralline growth. So, you know, we're, our alkalinity and calcium levels are going to stay quite uh, stable from the get go. Um, I'll get the camera off the tripod so you can uh, see the rock closer up and what sort of scape I went for. As you know, scaping is an absolute nightmare. Multiple attempts, you know, dry scaping it on the table. Uh, just could not get it right at all. So after about 10 attempts, uh, we, uh, we got it how we wanted. Um, so you just got to persevere with your scapes, just keep going until you eventually it just all falls into place. I uh, wanted a scape that sort of like lots of good good positions for corals but also functional for fish swim throughs etc um, etc. Et so get the camera off the tripod so you can see closer. Bear me two secs. Okay. So this is Escape, I'm quite happy with it. We've got like, um, always like to do this little sort of um, central cove. And we've got sort of like a ledge. And we've got sort of nice sand swim throughs going down to the sand bed on both sides. Going through there, so our, uh, Clean up crew like snails, shrabs, crabs and shrimp and stuff can work their way through different tunnels. 
or loads of nice overhangs underneath for hiding spots for fish and shrimp. Nice top shelving platform for SPS and then sort of branching down two sort of shoulders down each side. But as you can see, the colour of this rock is really, really nice. And I've heard that, um, yeah, you, you, your nuisance algae, green and red algae and all that stuff that comes in after a cycle and your diatoms that don't really like growing on this dyed surface, we'll see. But um, that'll be handy. Yeah, I'm really happy with the scape. So that's the rock, but as you can see, we've already got livestock in, which uh, is obvious we're at the stage where we we're fully cycled um, a few days ago. Now to cycle this tank, we used Red Seas Reef Mature Kit, which I'll talk you through that. Really, really impressed with it. Um, so we're at the stage where they say you can add livestock, so that's what I did. Um, couple of Ocelaris clownfish settled in really well been in since Sunday which is um, what three or four days now um, took a while to get feeding they're only just starting to feed on spectrum new life spectrum pellets but just the right size and these are in a tank on their own together They'd been together for about three weeks at the store and um, it's you know with livestock if you see exactly what you're after just get it because sometimes it can be a while before you see it again I know they're only clownfish but I'm really fussy and they had to be the right size not too big not too tiny these are just the perfect size they seem to really like each other whether they're paired or not probably not just yet um, so they do hang about together all the time Pretty much all the time but as I say that they're separating but uh, yeah they're always together they don't 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 fight or anything so fingers crossed that should be good we've got a um, cleaner shrimp scarlet skunk cleaner shrimp just a little bit of cleanup crew a couple of turbo snails blue leg hermit crab and a conch just down here Trying to keep the lights on as much as possible at the moment to get some algae growth. Nice film of algae sort of starting, so we've got a food supply. Okay. There's quite a few uh, other little upgrades I'm going to be doing with this tank, uh, which I'll go into in the next few videos. Um, but like I said, we've done we've done a few that you know about. And that's the uh, wave pump, the Tunzi Nano Stream. I think it's a sixty forty, and obviously the heating system, the D and D temp controller, and a hundred watt titanium heat bar. But we've got a few other mods that we want to do. Skimmer wise, the skimmer's still a little bit noisy. As people report, they're quite noisy. I have, uh, if I can get a capture of it, I have just um, put an exhaust system on the air intake, homemade jobby, which has quietened it down loads. But yeah, it's still bedding in until they've got a nice uh, bacterial slime coat on them. And then the motor and stuff, it can be a bit noisy. Okay, so let's talk about Red Sea's Reef Mature Programme. Um, where do I start really? Uh, I'm really, really impressed with it. Uh, we are on day 14 of it. Uh, it's a 21 day uh, mature program. Um, basically, I'm just gonna run you through it um, from the start. Uh, let me just put the camera back on the tripod. Bear me two secs. Okay. So, with the Reef Mature program, So it's a 21 day thing. What you must do, or I recommend you do, 
is do yourself an own personalised schedule. So get yourself a piece of uh, A4 paper and write down all your days and exactly what you're going to be doing on them days, it's clearer. There's obviously, it's really well illustrated uh, in an instruction manual inside the box, uh, but instead of keep referring to it and referring to it, it's better if you write it down. Obviously, when you're writing stuff down, it goes in better inside here. So write down all your days, starting with day one, day two, day three, and what you're going to be doing, what you're testing for, and what they say to dose for your tank. So you calculate what your system's volume is, and um, once you know that, you know how much to dose of whatever they're saying. So day one is basically sand, rock, and biological media in the system, and the system has to be running up to the temperature of 26 degrees or whatever temperature you're going to be running at, and a salinity between 33 and 35 parts per thousand. Um, make sure your skimmer is on 10 times turnover, sorry, uh, three times turnover of the system. It's a good efficient skimmer because you're going to obviously part of this program you're going to be running with these no box. So um, make sure your return pump, whether it's a sump system or a rear sump system like this, that it, it's turning over 10 times the system volume per hour. So once that's all up and running and you've got your rocking and your sanding, your biological media, whatever you're using in your, in your sump, uh, it's all turning over, you've got 10 pups, salinity up, that's day one done. So day one really doesn't really count because yeah, presumably you've got that all sorted and ready to rock. Um, I think I was running this for a week or so. Well, it's been running since the 1st of January, so it's running for a, a couple of days, sorry, a couple of weeks before we started the actual mature program. So for me, uh, with this tank, this reef mature kit also uh, incorporates um, uh, Coraline Grow solution to start kicking off your, and really sort of start getting your Coraline algae to grow. And they presume obviously you're going to be using live rock with this system, uh, with this program. But I haven't. So that part of it, and I didn't want loads of Coraline growing. So that side of this uh, program, where you live, doesn't apply to, to my Pacific program. But obviously, if you do want that to loads of coralline to grow and spread from your live rock and then obviously follow the coralline grow step in the program as well as. But for me, that's why I do really own personalised schedule. Um, it's just going to be the cycle process. So what we did obviously day two, so this would be effectively our day one, is uh, you add in you, you know, the amount of uh, nitro back and your back toe start. So we added those on day one, and uh, on day three, they're asking you to test your ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate levels. And they reckon the reading should be approximately, uh, obviously a reading of ammonia of about 1 ppm, nitrite about 0.1 ppm, and nitrates are already at 10 to 15. That's literally on day three, or effectively day two, if you get your drift. So, that's day three. You obviously got to add in whatever they say to add in, nitro back, um, which is obviously the bacteria, and three mil, a hundred of nopox, as you add in nopox as well. Um, day four is just nopox, day five, nopox, day six, nopox. It's a really simple program. It's just so simple. It's either you're adding nitro back or back toe start, and then nopox, whenever it says, which is pretty much every day. Uh, it says what your readings of, of, of your ammonia, nitrite, nitrate should be at, when to do, water changes or whatever. So day seven was our first water change, and um, so 5% water change. Test for ammonia, nitrite should be approximately 0 0.25, 0 0.05 nitrite, so they're saying that obviously the level should have dropped. Um, and I do a separate test sheet for my test results. I mean, it's, uh, obviously this is this tank and this is my son's tank um, so that, and they were quite accurate with what they're saying as we go through what the test level should be at uh, with ammonia and nitrite nitrate was a little bit higher than what they said but they, these are approximate readings um, so yeah we've got to day 10 and uh, basically was saying ammonia and nitrite should be at zero, you should have 10 ppm of nitrate. And 
on that day they were correct. Ammonia and nitrite zeroed out, which means the tank's cycled. There's a full cycle going on and um, just carry on with the program. So add more bacteria, more bacteria start. Basically with this, this way of uh, cycling a tank with this Red Sea Reef Mature uh, program, it, it's, it's a fishless cycle. So what you're doing is that you're adding Bacto Star, which is obviously simulating that you've got livestock in the tank, um, and obviously adding the bacteria to suit and doing it that way. Really, it happens really, really, really quickly. Um, so, so what they've said the level should be at, they have been at. So we were on day ten. We were cycled, completely cycled. So, and it's ready for clean up crew. Um, that's what we put in the clean up crew. These couple of clowns. Uh, they do say wait like another three or four days before you add sort of actual fish stock. But from my experience, only because I'm experienced with doing this so many times that. I know once you've got a zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and you've got a nitrate reading, the system is ready for fish. Or have been alone, you know, stop maybe one or two fish. So these two couple of clowns, as you can see, they're, they're small. So we decided to go for them, especially over there and there. And I thought, yeah, they're the ones. I thought, let's get them, get them in. Um, so that's where we're at with day 14. Um, Five percent water change, which I've done this morning. Uh, it does say nitrate should be around the 5 ppm mark. We are at 25 ppm. Again, it's an approximate figure uh, and considering in we've put livestock in sort of four days ago and I've been feeding a little bit, I would expect these, these levels to be higher, which they are. Um, but yeah, continuing now with no pox, two mil a day on this system and um, just keep monitoring the nitrates. They should start dropping down and we're hopefully we're getting them down below 5 ppm. Um, yeah, so there's not much now else, else to do um, on, on that mature practice done. And I say we're on day 14 and every day now is just dose no pox and then a day 21, 5% water change. Uh, so basically it's controlling nutrients now, getting nitrates down. And then we'll move on to, I have tested my alkalinity to see where that is yeah, just out of interest and we're around that 9.5 um, so that's okay we're going to test all the other parameters before we start introducing any other uh, well we're, we're all way off corals yet as you know it's going to be an SPS tank so until I know that calcium alkalinity magnesium and our nutrients are low and all our levels are nice and rock steady then I'll start introducing um, some corals but so we're well on the way uh, with this tank um, so far, really impressed with it. So there's a few other mods I'm going to be putting on this tank, which I'll cover in the next few videos. Um, so anyone that's getting a new tank or cycling, you know, want to cycle a new tank. So this is a new way I've been doing this Red Sea Mature program. Awesome. Wish I'd done it with my 750 actually. Um, very quick. All happens very quick. Um, it's quite an inexpensive kit to buy. I'm not sure exactly how much it was, I have to double check, but we're going to be doing a costing on everything uh, in the next few videos as well. We're going to do a full costing of everything, what the tank costs um, to get to this stage. So I think that's about it really. I've covered it as much as I can. Um, so near 20 minutes in, as I ramble on. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, obviously subscribe. Um, hit that notification bell thing. Hit a like if you enjoyed the video. Chuck a comment in the box below. I do read all the comments. It's so hard because I get quite a few comments. I do try and reply to everyone's comments. Um, yeah, so you've got any questions? Far away. What we're going to be doing next is probably a video on the extra mods that we're going to be putting on there. Um, yeah, we're just rolling it from there. So we're 24th of the month now, so the tank has been running for 24 days. And we've, we've got to a very good stage, I think. We've already got livestock in, and uh, it's all looking good. I've, I've, the water's a bit cloudy at the moment, but that's just because of bacterial blooms. At the end of cycling, you get these bacterial blooms. I think it's because we have quite high dose of no-pox as well. That can cloud the water. Um, but hopefully over the next week that should should clear up and go crystal clear like it was a couple of weeks back. 
obviously now we're on our sort of water change schedule every week now um, say every every Sunday we'll probably do a 10% water change in the system uh, just see how our nitrates go and stuff how they uh, they come down with the no-pox but yeah okay folks so again sorry rambling on um, hit that like chuck a comment down subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you in the next one thanks <clears throat>